This is the first video of a sequence of videos that provide you with a very basic overview on dynamic asset pricing theory. I try my best in these videos to provide you with the minimum essentials to understand concepts like stochastic discount factor, risk neutral probabilities, radon nicodym derivative, changing the probability measure, Q versus P pricing and Feynman catch. Now having said that, I also recommend you enroll in a formal dynamic asset pricing class to learn all of these concepts and much more in a more thorough way. Okay, now for that video here in particular, I talk about the following question. What is an asset market? Now, the minimum requirement for an asset market is to have n larger than zero risky assets. The price process of a risky asset is denoted as SIT. Now, the second minimum requirement is that there is a risk-free investment out there that pays the risk-free rate RT. Now, let's turn to the attention to the risk-free rate first. And after that, I say some words about the risky assets as IT. So the risk-free rate RT is the value of interest that you earn from a risk-free investment for the investment horizon T to T plus DT. You can think of RT as being the savings rate. So if you want to park your money for an instant DT larger than zero and without any volatility or default risk, then RT will be your certain payoff. Note, the risk-free rate doesn't need to be a constant. In fact, it can be a stochastic process. That is consistent with reality, where the savings rate on deposits or the short-term rate of central banks change over the business cycle. Yet the investment is risk-free for the next instant DT. That is because in T you know what you will have earned if you reach the time period T plus DT. Also note, RT is the continuously compounded risk-free rate. That says that you are receiving continuous interest on interest on your savings. So if you were to say you would like to continuously roll over your short term savings over a longer horizon capital T, then your final payout within that period would be random as of today t equals zero. We denote your cumulative time t return from a continuous rollover into the savings account as capital R with an index t. Now mathematically capital R t is defined as follows. If you look at that you see explicitly that you have a continuous interest rate little r that pays you the interest on a continuous basis. You can think about a one dollar being in front of the exponential sign so you see that rt is your final payoff of the dollar including all of the interest that you've earned from zero to t. Now if we wanted to highlight the randomness in the little r's explicitly we could write the last expression as the following equation here, where the little omega is just one particular state of the world. Yeah, but it just highlights that the little r is a random variable and therefore capital R will be random as well. Now usually we save notation and leave the w out. Anyways, from the context, it needs to be clear whether the risk-free rate is treated as a constant in a particular model 
or whether it's allowed to follow a stochastic process. Now let me add a very last word on the risk-free rate. You could also say that capital RT captures the time value of money. That implies that it coincides with the discount rate for payoffs in T that are not exposed to systematic risk. I highlight the word systematic risk. We tend to think that only risk-free assets are discounted by the risk-free rate. That is an incomplete picture. From the cap M, you know well that only systematic risk is compensated with a risk premium. Hence, a payoff with a random outcome in T would still be discounted by capital RT if you wanted its value at time zero and if that randomness is considered non-systematic, which means if that risk could be diversified if that asset was part of a large portfolio. If that line of reasoning is unclear to you, I suggest you study the capital asset pricing model and its implications. Now for the remainder of this video, I want to talk about the risky assets, SIT. So first, a risky asset like a stock is a claim on all future dividends of a firm. Firms pay out dividends mostly once a year, but sometimes also once a quarter. Whenever a firm pays off one currency unit of dividend, the stock price, ignoring any tax issues, drops by that same amount. For convenience, we work in our video sequence on dynamic asset pricing with the continuous time notation. That implies that dividends are paid out on a continuous basis. Hence the stock price becomes zigzag and that's not rooted in any unpredictable price shocks. In fact, these shocks are predictable. Hence the way around this issue is to assume that the paid out dividends are used to repurchase the stock. So ignoring any tax issues, if a firm pays out one currency unit of a dividend, the investor who receives that dividend takes it and repurchases the stock for one currency unit. Hence the portfolio contains one currency unit more of the stock. Overall, when valuing the portfolio of the original stock, and the additional unit bought, the value is just the same than the value of the original stock just prior to the dividend payout. So long story short, we treat SIT as a dividend reinvested risky asset. Moreover, that's my second point, we stack all risky assets into a vector ST meaning ST here is a column vector. First entry is S1T and the last entry is SNT. So the vector valued Ito stochastic differential equation for ST equals the following expression here, where DS over S is a n-dimensional column vector with DSI over SI as its ith component. Mu t is also n times one, while sigma t is of dimension n times k. And dBt is a k-dimensional column vector of Brownian motions. Note both mu t and sigma t could be random variables that themselves follow an e to SDE, hence the time index. Now, third, Let's look at the instantaneous covariance matrix of risky assets. So looking at the last E to SDE, it should be clear 
that the instantaneous covariation is defined as follows. So it's sigma t dBt, comma sigma t dBt, both in brackets. Now that is just equivalent or defined to be the conditional expectation as of time t of sigma t dBt times the transpose of sigma t dBt. Now you transpose the last part which gives you a dBt transpose times sigma t transpose. Now as sigma t is part of the ft information set while dBt is not, we can simplify the last expectation by taking the sigma t out of the expectation. So we have that the instantaneous core variation equals sigma t times the conditional expectation as of time t of dBt times dBt transpose times sigma t transpose. As dBt is a Brownian increment with a Gaussian distribution that has a mean of zero and the variance of dt, it's clear that the conditional expectation of dBt times dBt transpose is simply dt. Hence, the instantaneous covariation simplifies to sigma t times sigma t transpose dt, which we can also write as capital sigma t dt, where the capital sigma t is the instantaneous covariance matrix.